Hey everyone, welcome back to Bobby's World of Tech. I'm Bobby, and today we're going to be installing Windows 10 via Boot Camp on my MacBook Pro 13 inch with Retina display from 2015. Now, installing Windows on a Mac is not a new thing. Uh, people have been doing it for quite some time. In fact, when I got my first Mac book in 2007, uh, Boot Camp was available for you to be able to install Windows and be able to get the full feature of Windows and use both Mac and Windows on your Mac uh, for a few different reasons. When they switched over the Intel architecture in 2006 from the IBM architecture, uh, there was a huge uh, changeover and it enabled the platform hardware to be mostly the same. So now you can install Windows on your Mac and it's people do it for several different reasons and it can be very helpful and very useful for some people or some people just like to do it for fun. Now I don't think the process has changed a whole lot from 2007 till now and I have done it throughout the time maybe perhaps in 2009 and then again in 2010 or 2011 and it's been quite some time since I've done boot camp on my Mac because most of the time if I'm using Windows it's always somewhere at home or somewhere where I don't you know need to be out and about with Windows at all uh, mostly just using the Mac OS on my MacBook Pro and uh, hopefully the process might even be a little bit simpler but with installing Windows with flash drives now and via ISO perhaps package or images uh, disk drives aren't really used so much anymore so maybe the process will be a little bit simpler than it used to be uh, maybe even quicker somehow that'd be really nice now people install Windows on their Mac for several different reasons uh, one of them being perhaps maybe just being have access to exclusive Windows programs that aren't even available for Mac. And there are some of those and some for businesses that might perhaps need that. One example of that would be at the church or school where I work, uh, we had copies and licenses of FileMaker Pro. And so we could have purchased other licenses for the Mac OS version, but instead we just decided to use the Windows version and I installed Windows via Parallels, which is a whole different situation. You can run Windows and Mac at the same time uh, basically runs Windows off of your RAM and uh, which is kind of a nice and convenient thing because you have access to both OS's at the very same time via boot camp you have to actually reboot the system and boot into Windows or boot into Mac which can be better for utilizing the hardware uh, much better than uh, the uh, simple using within the same OS situation so uh, in our school we decided we would just go ahead and stick with the Windows version and I just simply via parallels use Windows on my Mac and we didn't have to purchase a new program and it was much cheaper to buy parallels and use that for many other applications at the same time. So people will use it for several different reasons and some I think one of the most popular things people will use it for is to be able to install Windows to play games that are only available on Windows instead of Mac. So I see a lot of that on other videos and other things people do for that reason. So uh, in fact the reason why I'm going to be installing Windows on my Mac is because I'm going on vacation soon and I wanted to be able to take some games with me in a portable package so I could go and have some fun. Now the MacBook Pro is not a gaming machine by any stretch of the imagination or by any means. It should still be able to play some simple titles at some decent frame rates with lower quality settings uh, and handle it just fine uh, even with the integrated Intel graphics. So without any further ado, why don't I go ahead and show you guys how to install Windows via Boot Camp in 2016. Alright, I have the desktop recording software here. I wanted to show you guys a little bit better uh, quality of what I'll be doing. And I apologize in advance if you hear any traffic. I live next to a very busy street and there's not really much I can do about it, so you're probably going to hear it every once in a while, but I do apologize about that. Uh, first what we could do is go directly to learn a little bit more about boot camp if you have any further questions or something that I'm not able to cover in this video you have questions about and if I'm not able to answer them you could go and you can simply just google boot camp and it should be one of the first ones that pops up here so we can go ahead and click on boot camp apple support and this brings you to a page that will explain a little bit more about boot camp and some things about uh, how to do it we're basically going to use these so how to install using boot camp and it gives you very simple instructions about this and tells you some things you need to do in preparation for installing it. So first of all, you need an Intel-based Mac, of course, which anything from 2006 and on uh, is pretty much Intel-based. Microsoft Windows installation, uh, you will need a legal copy of Windows, so you can install that. And typically Apple keyboard, mouse, and trackpad, but we're using a MacBook Pro, so that's pretty easy. At least 55 gigabytes of free disk space on your startup drive. Uh, I used 60, and then of course, uh, you pretty much just follow these steps and you should do well. Uh, we're of course going to be installing Windows 10 on my Mac, uh, so instead of installing Windows 7 or 8, which you can also do, 
Windows 10, uh, basically we're gonna get a tool to be able to install from a USB flash drive. So we want to install uh, a fresh install of Windows 10. And what we want to do is get Windows to install itself or the ISO onto a flash drive. And when we click on that link there in the Bootcamp website, it takes us to how to get to Windows 10. And of course, we have some preparatory things for Windows 10 itself on what to do before installing. Of course, we want to download the tool used to create the media creation. And then it gives us instructions on how to use the media creation tool once it's been downloaded and installed. Once the media creation tool is downloaded, you can close out the website. No longer need that. And we will go ahead into the downloads folder and open up the media creation tool. And you'll see this window when it starts getting everything ready. And you'll follow a few of these screens and their prompts, license terms and agreements, of course. And then it's going to come and ask you a question. What do you want to do? And of course, we want to create an installation media. And all these things are pretty standard. Uh, when it says addition Windows 10, that pretty much stands for Windows 10 Home or Windows 10 Pro. The others are not really normally used for most consumers. And of course, we want the 64-bit version specifically, because that's the version that needs to be installed on the Mac. And we want to create a USB flash drive, uh, but there's a slight change um, from when I was doing this on the computer before. Uh, we actually want to create an ISO image uh, of Windows 10 instead of doing the USB install. Uh, the Mac uh, Boot Camp software wants to look for an ISO image and not so much for the way that Windows makes the USB flash drive installation. So uh, the only change to this I would recommend is do the ISO installation image. Once the ISO is created, you can create it to a file on your desktop or another file on the computer. And then you can just simply take that file, that ISO, and just move it over to the flash drive, blank flash drive, with at least 8 gigabytes in size, and you should be perfectly fine. Uh, and it's much easier in terms of the Mac will just simply find the ISO file, and we'll cover that in just a minute. But once it starts creating the media, you're going to go ahead and let it do its download of Windows 10, and then, of course, creating the media itself. This process will take several minutes, so we won't watch the whole process. And once the creation process is finished, you'll get this window that says your USB flash drive is ready, or in your case, your ISO file is ready. And of course, once that ISO file is created, just copy that over to a blank USB flash drive. Once we have the USB flash drive with the ISO file on it, we're going to go ahead on over to the MacBook Pro and plug in our flash drive. Once you give it a moment to recognize the drive, we're just simply going to type in easy enough into the Spotlight Search Bootcamp. And the first thing that should pop up should be the Bootcamp Assistant software. And the first window you'll see pop up for the Bootcamp Assistant is just instructions on what Bootcamp Assistant is actually for. And we already know that, of course, so we're going to hit continue. And then the next thing we're going to do is select the ISO image uh, for letting the computer know where that's at to install it. So we're going to, of course, use the flash drive, locate that, and hit uh, continue. And then we're going to choose the size of the partition we want for Windows. And you can choose, of course, I think as small as um, maybe 40 gigabytes. But, of course, you have to have the space available on the Mac OS uh, as well. So you can choose that. I'm going to do 60 gigabytes. That should be big enough for all the main files and programs that I have. And then anything extra I can install on the SSD. Then you just enter your password for the computer and it's going to start downloading some files and things necessary for boot camp drivers and things and we just need to wait for that to finish And once it's done partitioning the hard drive and downloading all the drivers and other installation material, it will automatically just reboot on its own and start the Windows installation process. 
and there'll be some prompts for a Windows installation. If you've been through this before, you know what to expect. It's pretty typical. And it's going to ask you for your Windows key, which you need to make sure you have handy. And you'll want to type that in. And of course, just follow the on-screen prompts. When you get to the section that asks you about which partition or which drive to install Windows, you can select the Boot Camp Partition, and you can actually format the Boot Camp Title Partition. Once that's finished, still selecting that partition, you can hit Next or Install. This process, of course, will probably take several minutes, so you just got to sit back and wait. Of course, with the flash storage, it will be a little quicker than it would be with the mechanical hard drive, thank goodness. And it'll reboot uh, maybe once or twice, and you will get the finalizing steps of the Windows installation when it comes up with the Windows symbol and letting you know that it's getting your devices ready. And as with usual, you'll get to the place where you'll go ahead and select your personal settings for Windows before it actually successfully boots. Then it's going to ask you to create a username account and of course a password. And of course if you have a Windows account, you can actually sign in with that and transfer several settings and things from another Windows user account. Once it's finished getting everything set up, it'll load up to the desktop and it'll have the boot camp assistant software waiting and it'll go ahead and install all the Apple drivers for Windows. Go ahead and complete that installation. It'll take several more minutes. And when it is finished, it'll want to probably reboot the system once again. And now Windows has been successfully installed. So a complete success. I think that everything worked out very well. Uh, I'm actually quite uh, impressed. I think everything runs really, really smoothly. Uh, you know, I see a lot of these comments about people that are like, Windows doesn't run any better on a Mac. In fact, it runs the worst that's ever run. What? So despite all those comments, I think that it runs actually quite well. In fact, I feel it's almost a little polished. Uh, when running Windows on a Mac, uh, especially on the MacBook Pro 13 inch right in the display, I think that it has a sort of finesse feeling or really, really fine tuned, if you would. But overall, I think that everything was a success. There are a couple things I wanted to note, though, that I was not really as much aware of before I started this project, and I think they'd be helpful. One is if you plan on ever upgrading your hard drive or, in fact, ever plan on uh, getting a new MacBook Pro in the near future. Uh, I know some are bound to be released here pretty soon, coming up on the June event for Apple. Uh, you will not be able to copy over the partitions using the standard Apple method of when you get a new hard drive, if you're using Time Machine or something like that, you will have to repartition and reinstall Windows uh, with the same process that you just saw us do today. So just keep that in mind. Uh, there may be some programs out there that allow you to copy the hard drive, including the partitions, and maybe increase the space for those partitions at the same time. I have not used any of those on the Apple platform. I've used some of those on the PC platform. But at the same time, I'm not sure if there's one that would be capable of doing that. So if you're planning on getting a new hard drive or a new computer at all, you may want to uh, go ahead, back up a time machine, restore, and then you're going to go ahead and repartition. And chances are, if you're getting another hard drive, you're getting one that has more space anyways. So whether it's a bigger flash drive or bigger hard drive. So you're going to want to probably readjust the Windows partition perhaps at the same time. So uh, that's something I would do and I imagine people would do as well if they have more space. If you have more space, use it. The other two things I wanted to mention real quick uh, before we end this video is that uh, something I wasn't quite aware of as much, but definitely makes a lot of sense. Uh, I don't play, again, a lot of games. I'm not a, really a gamer per se, but the games I do like to play, there are some that I found and some cheaper games, some cheaper titles that are not very popular. And uh, by far, I've noticed that using the Intel integrated graphics, I think this one uses the Iris 6100 uh, graphics chip, it's not quite as popular, so therefore the support for that's not going to be quite as good on cheaper titles. They don't have quite as much the staff to be able to incorporate really good support. Although the game runs really great on major uh, graphic companies like AMD or NVIDIA, it doesn't do a real fantastic job perhaps on the integrated chips. So just a small note about that, if you end up playing a lot of cheaper titles, some things that are free-to-play games might be actually a little bit better, but some cheaper games that may be made by 
a uh, smaller group of people, things like that, there may not be as good of support for those integrated chips. So something I noticed, one of the games I like to play is called uh, Orion Prelude, which is a fantastic 99 cent game off of Steam. Uh, it's pretty much a mixture of Halo and Jurassic Park. Probably the best way I can describe it. And it's just a lot of fun. It's a co-op game. They can play up to five or six players uh, together. And you can go in and defend a base and just shoot a bunch of dinosaurs. It's a lot of fun. And uh, there's a couple other type of, type of game plays that you can do. But, uh, and it's really easy to start a game. You can either play on the servers online or start your own game. And Steam makes it so easy to be able to just start your own game and people to join in. But uh, so when that title specifically, with everything turned down as far as it could go, I was only getting about 20 to maybe a peak of 30 frames per second at times, but not at a great, uh, great success. So that's something I noticed and that with more AAA titles, uh, although they're not going to run at the best settings, with lower settings, the compatibility and the capability of the integrated chip was capable of running at more like a 30 frames per second which is what I was kind of aiming for a target in this kind of a class. As long as it kind of ran at the 30 frames per second mark, that's kind of what I was hoping to achieve, uh, regardless of the quality settings or the resolution settings, to be able to get a, at least fun experience and gameplay. The other thing that I noticed that you may want to take note of, uh, and I wasn't really aware of this per se, is the thermal throttling. Now, uh, I knew that there had been some MacBook Pros in the past that had some issues with thermal throttling, and that's something you should definitely note. But uh, this is the MacBook Pro 13-inch with Retina higher-end model from 2015. And I know they're coming out with a new model pretty soon. But this is the i7 3.1 gigahertz, I think Turbo Boost up to 3.4. And the integrated graphics on it uh, also, I think, can go up to 1.2 gigahertz, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, however, I never did see that occur on this machine. In fact, the highest I saw the graphics ever get was about 1 gigahertz, and that was when I was not doing any intense gameplay. So that's something you should note, uh, and the heat was definitely intense when running a CPU benchmark like Ida64 or just playing game in a normal environment. Uh, it, temperatures were getting up to about the 100 to 105 degrees max Celsius, which is not going to be bad necessarily for the chip. I know it's made to run that hot, but it's probably trying to save itself uh, in the long run by thermal throttling and so you will definitely experience that uh, more so on the graphics side than on the CPU side but I was definitely hitting uh, marks of about 800 megahertz 850 instead of the 1 to 1.2 gigahertz range so I thought what in the world could I do to perhaps maybe solve this and help this out just a little bit uh, really quickly and so I did some research and I went online and I purchased this guy uh, maybe perhaps if you guys want me to do a review on this can't see the camera. Uh, review on this sometime in the near future. I'll do that. And uh, this is a great uh, Cooler Master X3 cooling pad. It's not one of the most uh, like high-end ones out there, but it's definitely been around for just a few years. And it does a great job from what I saw. It actually did lower the temperatures enough to be able to get a small increase and a little less thermal throttling. So it did actually, uh, was quite a success, how much you might ask. Uh, I think I gained about maybe anywhere from one to three frames on the cheaper game like Orion Prelude, but in the more popular titles, something like World of Warcraft or even something like Age of Empires, which I know is a really old game, it gave me as much as about a five frames per second boost just by using a cooling pad and helping the thermal throttling go down. And I think the megahertz went up to around the 900 to 950 megahertz range. So definitely a small improvement. And you may ask, do you think it was worth paying 40 bucks for the cooling pad? I think probably. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing. If anything, it may help the lifespan of the machine in terms of keeping it a little bit cooler. But you'll have to weigh that out in your own opinion and see if that's something you actually want to do. So just so you're aware, thermal throttling was a small issue for me. You might be experiencing the same thing and if you think you should be getting a frame per second or more higher than you are, maybe that's the reason and you can take care of that with a cooling pad like I did. It worked pretty well. Maybe there's another solution that I didn't think of that you could do as well. So I think all in all, I think everything was a success. Windows runs really great on the Mac and I think I'll be able to take it on vacation and be able to play a few games with some friends, have a good time. And I hope that it's been also a help for you if you were also trying to install Windows on your Mac. Hopefully the instructions were good and uh, simple enough that you are able to follow. And most importantly, that it helped you out. Well, I think that wraps up this video. I'm Bobby with Bobby's World of Tech, and I hope you guys have a great day. Okay. Man, 
that is a good cup of coffee.